AI chip demand is exploding up more than 170% year over year, and data center footprints are doubling roughly every three years. But there's a problem almost no one is talking about. Every one of those GPU clusters is heading toward the same hard limit, and it has nothing to do with silicon. It's electricity. By the end of this decade, U.S., data centers alone are projected to consume over 12,000 terawatt hours annually, enough to power every American home twice over. To put that into perspective, it's the equivalent of building roughly 30 Hoover dams every single year just to keep servers online. Globally, energy demand tied to data centers and AI is expected to surge from roughly 400 terawatt hours today to nearly 1,000 by 2030 and well over 3,000 by 2035 before the next generation of AI training even arrives. This means the next decade of AI won't be defined by who builds the fastest chip. It will be defined by who controls the power that keeps those chips running. And that's where nuclear energy enters the conversation. In this video, I'm breaking down the full nuclear value chain, starting at uranium extraction and moving through fuel processing, reactor development, and finally, the utilities already generating large-scale nuclear power. Because the real opportunity isn't picking a single winner, it's understanding how this entire system connects and how to balance high upside moonshots with durable, cash-generating infrastructure. And that brings us to the first company in the stack, Uranium Royalty Corp ticker symbol, UROY. UROY sits at the very bottom of the nuclear stack, but unlike traditional miners, it doesn't operate mines. Instead, it owns royalties, streams, and physical uranium exposure across the industry. That distinction matters because it allows UROY to benefit from rising uranium prices without taking on the execution, permitting, or operating risks that slow most mining projects. This layer matters now because global uranium demand already exceeds supply and the gap is being filled by inventories that are shrinking quickly. New production takes years to bring online, which means pricing power increasingly shifts to anyone with exposure to existing or future output. UROY captures that upside across multiple projects rather than betting on a single mine. The structural advantage here is leverage without friction. Royalties scale automatically as production ramps, and UROY doesn't need to spend billions on development or navigate regulatory delays. As uranium prices rise, cash flow improves without capital intensity. From a risk standpoint, this is not a moonshot. If prices stall, returns flatten. But in a scenario where nuclear expands to meet AI-driven baseload demand, Uranium scarcity is the first domino, and UROY is positioned directly on that pressure point. In a portfolio, UROY functions as low-risk exposure to the bottleneck itself. It's not about headlines or reactor breakthroughs. It's about owning the quiet leverage beneath the entire AI energy build-out. The next company in this AI nuclear energy shift is Energy Fuels ticker symbol, U, which sits at a critical transition point in the nuclear stack. It doesn't just mine uranium, it controls processing capacity through the White Mesa Mill in Utah, which is the only conventional uranium mill operating in the United States. That single fact gives this company outsized strategic importance. Why does that matter? Because uranium pulled from the ground is useless until it's processed. And right now, the U.S. is actively trying to rebuild domestic nuclear supply chains while reducing dependence on foreign conversion and processing, especially from Russia. Energy Fuels has already sold uranium into Department of Energy programs, which tells you exactly how Washington views this asset. The structural advantage here is scarcity. Permitting a new uranium mill today would likely take a decade, if it happens at all. Energy Fuels already has the license, the infrastructure, and the operational history. That creates a time moat that new entrants simply can't replicate. Execution-wise, Energy Fuels isn't a pure speculation. It has operating assets today, optionality to restart and scale production as prices rise, and a secondary lever through rare earth processing, which adds strategic value beyond nuclear alone. The risks are still tied to commodity pricing and throughput. If uranium prices stagnate, Utilization drops, but as nuclear demand expands to meet AI-driven baseload needs, 
processing becomes a choke point, and choke points tend to earn pricing power. In a portfolio, UUUU sits above pure miners in the stack. It's more operationally leveraged than royalties, but far less speculative than reactor developers. This is a control point, not a moonshot, and it benefits as soon as the nuclear supply chain tightens. Up to this point, we've been talking about leverage, scarcity, and bottlenecks. But every system also needs an anchor, something that actually produces at scale today. That's where Cameco ticker symbol, CCJ, enters the picture. Cameco isn't a theory. It isn't a future project. It's one of the largest uranium producers on the planet, already supplying roughly 15% of global uranium output. While smaller players are preparing for higher prices, Cameco is already inside long-term contracts with utilities that can't afford supply disruptions. What makes Cameco different is not just size, it's positioning. Its flagship assets in Canada and Kazakhstan sit at the low end of the global cost curve, which means it stays profitable even when uranium prices pull back. That's why utilities trust Cameco when fuel security matters more than price speculation. There's also vertical influence here. Cameco owns a stake in Westinghouse Electric, giving it exposure beyond mining and into reactor services and fuel cycle operations. That connection matters as utilities extend reactor lifetimes and prepare for next-generation deployments. Now, the trade-off is clear. Cameco is not going to deliver 5x or 10x returns overnight. At a large market cap, it's priced for durability, not explosive upside. But in an environment where AI-driven nuclear, demand is forcing utilities to lock in supply years ahead of time, reliability becomes a premium feature. The risk is simple. If uranium prices stagnate, Cameco won't surprise anyone. But if supply tightness persists and inventories continue shrinking, Cameco benefits first because it's already producing, already contracted, and already embedded in the fuel cycle. In the stack, Cameco is the blue chip spine. It's the company utilities lean on when experimentation ends and execution begins. Not flashy, not speculative, but absolutely essential. Now let's talk about speed because in a tightening uranium market, timing matters just as much as scale. Uranium Energy Corp ticker symbol, UEC, is built around one core idea. When prices move, they want to move immediately. UEC specializes in in-situ recovery mining, a method that avoids massive open pits, heavy equipment, and long construction timelines. Instead of digging, they inject solution underground and extract uranium-rich fluid through existing wells. Why does that matter right now? Because the uranium market doesn't need supply 10 years from now. It needs supply this cycle. And UEC controls a portfolio of fully permitted, shovel-ready projects in Texas and Wyoming, many of which were acquired when prices were depressed. This makes UEC a reactivation play, not a discovery story. When uranium prices justify it, production can restart in months rather than years. That optionality is extremely valuable in a market where utilities are scrambling to secure domestic supply and inventories are already being drawn down. There's also a geopolitical layer here. UEC is one of the most U.S.-focused uranium companies in the market, and it's already delivering into Department of Energy programs aimed at rebuilding domestic nuclear fuel security. That alignment matters as governments prioritize supply chains over lowest-cost sourcing. Now, this isn't a blue-chip stabilizer like Cameco. UEC's revenues are more sensitive to uranium prices, and production decisions are closely tied to market conditions. If prices stall, assets stay idle. But that's the trade. UEC offers torque, not stability. In the nuclear stack, this is the company designed to respond fastest when the system tightens. In a portfolio, UEC plays the role of tactical exposure, a US-based lever on rising uranium prices, positioned to benefit when policy, urgency, and market economics finally align. Up to this point, everything in the stack has been about fuel, how fast it can be mined, processed, and secured. But none of that matters unless someone can actually turn it into electricity. And this is where New Scale Power ticker symbol, SMR, separates itself from almost every other reactor company on the board. New Scale isn't competing on ideas. It's competing on approval. In 2023, 
NuScale became the first and only small modular reactor design fully approved by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. That single milestone changes the entire risk profile of the company. In nuclear, regulation isn't a hurdle, it's the gate. And NuScale is already through it. Its reactor modules produce about 77 megawatts each, and they're designed to be factory built, shipped, and installed in clusters. That dramatically shortens construction timelines compared to traditional reactors that take a decade or more to complete. NuScale's first major project, the Voyager plant, is backed by the Department of Energy and Municipal Utilities, signaling institutional confidence. And beyond the U.S., NuScale is actively exploring deployments in regions where energy security is no longer optional. The risk here isn't technical feasibility that's largely been de-risked. The risk is execution and economics. Project delays, customer financing, and cost sensitivity can still pressure the stock. This is not a cash flow company yet. But in the nuclear stack, New Scale occupies a rare position. It's the bridge between fuel and power, the company most likely to deploy SMRs at scale first. In a portfolio, SMR is not stability and not a trade. It's a regulated growth bet, lower risk than early stage reactor startups but still leveraged to the next phase of nuclear deployment as AI-powered demand forces utilities to move faster than ever before. If some uranium companies compete on speed and others compete on scale, next-gen energy ticker symbol, NXE, competes on quality, and that distinction matters more than most investors realize. Next-gen controls the arrow deposit in Canada's Athabasca Basin, one of the highest-grade uranium discoveries ever identified. While the global average uranium grade sits well below 1%, Aero's grades are multiple times higher than that. And in mining, grade is destiny. Higher grades mean less rock moved, lower operating costs per pound, smaller environmental footprint, and stronger margins across price cycles. That's why Aero isn't just another uranium project. It's considered a Tier 1 asset in a sector where Tier 1 assets are extremely rare. What makes this particularly relevant now is the mismatch between supply and demand. Utilities don't just need more uranium, they need reliable, long-life sources that can anchor contracts for decades. Aero is designed to do exactly that, with projected production large enough to represent a meaningful share of global supply from a single site. NextGen has already completed feasibility work and secured critical agreements with local First Nations communities, which significantly reduces permitting friction in Canada. NextGen is a next cycle supply cornerstone. If uranium prices stay elevated and utilities continue locking in long-term fuel contracts, assets like Aero become increasingly strategic. The risk is patience. Large, world-class projects take time and delays or cost inflation can impact returns. But if nuclear demand expands the way AI-driven power forecasts suggest, high-grade deposits will command premium valuation. In the stack, NXE represents future supply dominance. The last stock on this list is Centris Energy ticker symbol, LEU. Controls the narrowest choke point in the entire nuclear stack. Centris is the only U.S. company licensed to produce HALU, high assay, low enriched uranium. This isn't standard reactor fuel. Traditional reactors run at about 5% enrichment. Hello goes up to just under 20%, and that higher concentration is what next generation reactors and small modular reactors are built around. That distinction turns Centris into a gatekeeper. Without Hello, reactors from companies like NuScale and Oklo don't move from concept to concrete. They don't break ground. They don't generate power. The technology can be ready. The capital can be committed. But without fuel, nothing happens. Centris already has centrifuges operating at the Department of Energy's Piketon, Ohio facility, producing Halle for federal test reactors. The strategic importance here goes beyond economics. Roughly 45% of the world's enrichment capacity still sits in Russia. Rebuilding that capability domestically is now viewed as a national security issue, not just an energy one. Centris sits directly at the center of that effort, backed by DOE funding and long-term policy support. The risk is scale and dependency. Centris doesn't control demand. It depends on reactor deployment timelines. Delays in SMR rollouts can push revenue further out. But structurally, this is the tightest bottleneck in the entire system. And bottlenecks don't need growth stories, they need volume. In a portfolio, LEU isn't a miner, a reactor bet, 
or a utility proxy. Its leverage on the one step the entire nuclear expansion cannot skip. If AI power demand accelerates nuclear deployment, enrichment isn't optional, and Centris is already inside the gate. 